We really need to talk about legislation. Sorry. Alrighty, so key legislation. So when we're talking about networks and network security, we need to consider the legislation that sits behind it all. Okay, so there's several key laws that relate to the information systems and telecommunications industries. These laws govern the collection and use of private information by both government and non-government organisations at both the state and federal level. Okay, so different laws at different levels of government. Employers and government, government agencies have a legal responsibility to ensure that these laws are implemented within their organisations. Organisations must make employees and customers aware of their rights, as well as of their responsibilities in relation to these laws. Okay, so the big one, Privacy Act 1988. So the Privacy Act includes the following. It has 13 Australian privacy principles, and you can see those in chapter one, if you've got it. Uh, and they apply to the handling of personal information by most Australian and Norfolk Island government agencies and some private sector organisations. Okay. Um, Credit reporting provisions that apply to the handling of credit related personal information that credit providers are permitted to disclose to credit reporting bodies for inclusion on individuals credit reports. So if I rack up a big debt on my credit card, the credit card people are legally allowed to pass that information on to other um, people that might be wanting to lend me money. Um, the collection, storage and use storage use disclosure security and disposal of individuals tax file numbers the handling of health information uh, in circ certain circumstances but there is another whole act for that as well information commissioner to approve and register forcible APPs which is Australian privacy principles codes that have been developed I don't think we need to worry about that too much provision for a small business operator who would otherwise not be subject to the APPs to opt in to being covered by the APP so as I said before the APPs Australian privacy principles they are for mainly government agencies and some private sector organizations but you can opt in as well and now a quick word from our sponsor check out our new merch coming soon <laughs> just kidding as if <laughs> for an individual the privacy act gives people more control over the way their personal information is handled the privacy act allows individuals to have the option of not being identified or the use of a pseudonym which is like a fake name i suppose in certain circumstances this is the way know why personal information is being collected and how it will be used so if someone wants to collect data about me I have a right to be able to ask, why are you collecting this? Why do you need it? And how are you going to use it? And who will you be sharing it with? They are legally required to tell me. I know my rights. Discontinue receiving unwanted direct marketing. So spam, get rid of spam. Ask for access to personal information, including health information. Um, ask for personal information that is incorrect to be corrected. Make a complaint about an entity covered by the Privacy Act if personal information has been mishandled. Right. So as part of the Privacy Act, the Australian Privacy Principles were devised to set out the standards, rights and obligations for collecting, handling, holding, accessing, using, disclosing and correcting personal information. The Australian Privacy Principles apply to all federal government agencies and certain non-government organisations. They don't apply to local councils or state or territory governments. Some states have their own privacy laws, such as the Victorian Privacy and Data Protection Act 2014. That's interesting. And that's sort of like an amendment or an addition to the original one. But it is Victorian, it's worth noting. The APPs oversee the handling of personal information by Australian government organisations, agencies and Norfolk Island. All private health service providers, businesses that have an annual turnover of 3 million, or those that trade personal information. Alrighty. So we just mentioned before about the Privacy and Data Protection Act 2014. So the Privacy and Data Protection Act 2014 in Victoria has 10 information privacy principles. So like the Australian privacy principles, this has its own set of principles and these are these here. I'm gonna let you pause that right here and you can read them for yourselves. Okay, 
So information must be protected from misuse, loss, unauthorized access, modification or disclosure. So this is important. Information must be protected from misuse, loss or whatever. You can't collect data if you do not make some effort or attempt to correctly protect that data. Okay, you have a legal obligation to protect the data. That means investing in security software, security hardware, all the stuff we've talked about as far as that goes. Reasonable steps must be taken to destroy or de-identify personal information that is no longer needed. Wow, I said that way too fast. Let's try that again a bit slower this time. Reasonable steps must be taken to destroy or de-identify personal information that is no longer needed. Number five, the organization needs to be transparent about what it does. So you've got to be honest. This is what we're doing with your data. We have to tell you, right? Organizations can use unique identifiers, often these are numbers, only when able to show that the unique identifier is essential to the efficient performance of functions. What is that talking about? That's talking about... Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know what that's talking about. But don't worry, I won't put it on the test. If your personal information travels outside Victoria, your privacy protection must travel with it. Health Records Act 2001. Victorian Health Records Act 2001. It's got 11 health privacy principles. So they've all got their privacy principles, yeah? So the Act protects the confidentiality of confidentiality, confidentiality of patients' healthcare information by allowing the information to be used only for the primary purpose for which it is gathered. This means that information about medical test results and your medical history may be used by your doctor, the hospital, or any other health professional only for the purpose of your immediate or ongoing care. Without your consent, this information would not be disclosed to a third party. Nearly finished. Without your consent, this information would not be disclosed to a third party. Health information may, however, be provided to third parties without your consent under certain and strictly limited circumstances that include requests by family members in an emergency when you cannot give your consent and your life is threatened, where there is a serious threat to public health and welfare, research in the public interest, investigation and of unlawful activity and as part of a legal claim. So there's a few caveats to that. An individual who believes that the Health Records Act has been breached can make a complaint. It isn't fair! Right, so for example, notice when you ring up the doctor and you ask the, uh, the receptionist, and you say, can you give me my test results over the phone, please? Can you let me know how, what the results were? They will say to you, no, we can't do that. You have to come in and see your doctor. Um, they can't give that to you over the phone because it's not their right to share that information or even see that information. All right, bye for now. If you found that useful, maybe check out one of my other videos and maybe even subscribe.